To begin, please press the Start button. Game on! I guess you're wondering what this is. Is it a life support system for captured UFO pilots? Or possibly a jello-based gravitational wave detector? How about a singles bar for lonely robots? Goal canceled. Game over. Those are all excellent guesses. But what it is, is a control system for indoor soccer. Hello, my name is Terry Gould. I'd like to show you my system. But first, let me explain a little bit about what indoor soccer is. Uh, the sport of indoor soccer is played on a small field with sideboards like in ice hockey. It's a very intense, non-stop game that could be described as pinball soccer. There's lots of places where you can play indoor soccer, but almost always it involves being on a team in a league. But playing on a team can be difficult. People work different schedules and game times are hardly ever the same. What if you suddenly decide you want to play with a couple friends in the middle of the day on Tuesday? This system is specifically designed for people who want to play pickup or, as some people call it, drop-in soccer rather than on a team in a league. Some years ago I was playing with a group that played short pickup games. It was a fairly simple concept. Two teams would play for five minutes, then one team would leave, another team would come in for five minutes, and on and on. We paid five dollars a session, and it was very popular. We, always full, we were always full even though we uh, we had terrible times, like 7 a.m. on a Sunday morning or noon on Wednesday. At that time, I was working in electronics at a large airport. And one day I realized that some of the electronics that we used could also be used for automating indoor soccer games. I know this sounds a bit strange, but I realized that using some of the same gear, it would be possible to automate the process of accepting payment from the players, setting up games, keeping track of the score, and allowing players who had been waiting to join the game. Now to show you how this system would work for uh, accepting admission, uh, I've set up this small uh, kiosk using a touchscreen monitor. Uh, of course, there would be no cashiers, but I've, I've tried to set it up so that it would be as simple as using an ATM or a gas pump. It works off of these uh, proximity cards that you've probably used to get into uh, parking structures or into buildings. Uh, they're very inexpensive, about 10 cents a piece in, in big quantity. Uh, and for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to be using these plastic figures. Uh, obviously, full-size players would be a little hard to move around. Uh, so I'm going to start with Albert Einstein. Uh, Albert here, who plays a very cerebral game, decides he wants to play some indoor soccer. So he comes over here and he cards in as a card reader. And he has a selection of how to pay. Uh, so he decides to pay with cash. He puts in his money, and Albert is ready to go. Now, Scooby-Doo, uh, he decides he wants to play some indoor soccer too, and he comes over here and he uses the card reader, and Scooby decides he wants to pay with a credit card. Uh, I'm not sure how dogs get credit cards or how they carry them around, but anyway, um, Scooby decides to use his credit card. So Scooby uses the card, and Scooby is ready to play some indoor soccer. Now, the way this is set up, I figured that most people would want to play for about two hours. Uh, the admission price could be adjusted for the time of day, so you'd probably charge less in the middle of the day. In the uh, evening hours and on weekends, you could increase the, uh, the admission price. This is the main part of the system. Let me explain how it all fits together. This small shuttle computer is the, is the boss of the system. 
Uh, it runs uh, Ubuntu Linux and it's programmed in Python, which is a fairly common software language. For displays, I've selected these LCD displays. These are perhaps a little smaller than I'd use in an actual game. Uh, but LCD displays have come down in price as they've gone up in size. This particular uh, screen here is, is what I call the Q monitor. Uh, it's facing the people who are waiting to get into the game. Uh, this other monitor here is the actual scoreboard. That would turn around and face the players. And that's why the right team and the left team are reversed, is because it, it's flipped around in an actual game. These goals are small models. Uh, Full-size indoor soccer goals would be about 10 feet wide by about 6.5 feet tall. Uh, that's a bit unwieldy for this demonstration. However, they have the same electronics and the same mechanics as the big goals would have, and they function the same. Uh, their biggest function, of course, is to register goals. Now, uh, supposing you have a game going and nobody wants to play keeper. So it's possible to make these into small goals just with a, the system or a flick of a switch. And of course, uh, if you want to, you can send them right back up. The goal electronics allow the sensitivity of the goal to be adjusted, and also they store the intensity of the last goal. Uh, this is the cue monitor that faces people waiting to get into the game. And as you can see right now, it's set up for five minutes per game and five players per game. So I'm going to take it down to one minute per game, which of course is just for testing. And I'm going to take it down to three players a game. And for goals, I'm going to make it a large goal. Six players should enter. Well, as you can hear, the system is ready to play a game. So what we need to do is put our players into the game. And we use these card readers. Uh, this small one is for people waiting to get into the game, the cue card reader. These long ones, uh, these long range ones, uh, will go out to a meter, which means the players don't even have to take the card out of their pockets when they go in and out of the game. So let's start by going to uh, the left team, which is going to be Darwin, Che Guevara, good left foot, and uh, Homer Simpson, who doesn't move very fast out there. And then on the other team, we're going to have Albert Einstein, Scooby-Doo, and Chairman Mao. Now, as you can see, when the proper number of players have arrived, the game gets ready to go. And it's going to tell us in a second here. Again, please press the start button. So, I press the start button. Game starting in five. Game on! So, the game begins. So let's say that one of the teams scores a goal. Goal! The game pauses for a short period of time to allow the players to reset themselves, and then it's going to start up again. Left team, zero. Right team, one. Now you may have noticed that there's two other buttons here. This red button is a pause button. If I hit the pause button, the game has been paused. this is in case a player is injured or falls down or there's something else to stop the game for a short period of time. This allows me to show you something else about this system, and that's that goals can only be scored when the clock is running. So while we're on pause, if I try to score a goal, as you can see, nothing happens. 
Now to restart the game, all I need to do is just push the start button. Game is restarting in five. So you're probably wondering what the blue button does. The blue button is a goal cancel button. So if I have a goal, let, let's say that maybe somebody used their hand and you want to you want to eliminate that goal. You just hit the blue button. There would be one next to each goal. Goal canceled. Left team zero. Right team one. And so the game continues. Uh, now let's suppose that uh, Mahatma Gandhi shows up and he wants to play in a game. All Mahatma Gandhi has to do is come over here to the cue reader. And he's in queue for the next game. So in a second, the game will shut down. Game ending in 10. Game over. Left team, zero. Right team, one. Right team wins. One player should exit. One player should enter. So the game will wait until one player exits. In this case, that will be Darwin. And one player can enter then, which in this case will be Mahatma Gandhi. And then the game will start up again. So as we can see on the queue monitor here, uh, there's three people waiting and we're still in three-person teams so there's a full team waiting left team exit three players should enter so all we really need to do is take out uh, this team, the left team which is Gandhi Che Guevara and Homer Simpson and we're going to put in our new team of Bart Simpson Velma from Scooby-Doo and Tesla. And the game will start up again. And this will keep going on and on forever. And if by chance there aren't enough uh, players for a team, it'll go back to just bringing in one or two. Please press the start button. Well, I hope you enjoyed my uh, short demonstration here. It just covers some of the uh, possibilities here. There's a whole lot of other things that could be added. For instance, because the players are identified, uh, it would be fairly easy to integrate it with Facebook so that people could uh, have friends and, and set up uh, games. Uh, there could be an app to show who's playing at any, any time and maybe uh, what games are going. Uh, it would also be possible to have multiple fields uh, so that people could play with others of their own ability rather than everybody just mixed together. And I think it's especially important that if you're playing indoor soccer and it's fun, that you got music and it's fairly loud so you can hear it. Maybe some uh, James Brown or some Tito Puente or some Alabama Shakes. In any event, uh, I'm going to put an email address where you can contact me in the credits and uh, I'm going to let the system have the last word. Field shutting down. All players should exit. Goodbye. Let's go.